find the defendant guilty. The deadly narcotic. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Richard Liu and I'm a fourth year medical student at Harvard and management consultant based out of New York City. Moving back to New York in just a couple months to start my residency training in ENT and head and neck surgery at the combined Columbia Cornell residency program. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about a question that I've been getting a lot recently, which is how I picked otolaryngology or ENT as my specialty choice. I'm gonna be sharing a framework of specialty considerations and how they shape up in a lot of the different specialties that I consider during medical school. And if you haven't already, be sure to check out my video from a couple weeks ago where I talk about a bigger picture question of how I chose to stay in clinical medicine as opposed to staying on my career path in management consulting or doing something non-clinical. So I break out the things that differentiate these different specialties into 11 factors that fall into three categories. Number one, the nature of the work. Number two, the nature of your patient relationships. And number three, the quality of life that you have. Some specialties can be more or less constrained across these different factors. At the end of the day, this is really a journey about reflecting and identifying what really matters to you and calibrating during medical school and residency to find the career that fits you best. So let's jump right in. I think there are four components to the nature of the work itself. The first is how medical or surgical a specialty is, and specialties fall under a spectrum here. A lot of fields have both a medical and a surgical counter Part. So for instance, neurology and neurosurgery or cardiology and cardiac surgery. ENT is pretty special in that it does not have a medical or surgical counterpart, but it does both. So ultimately, whether or not you like being in the operating room and like performing procedures is going to be something that you figure out when you enter the operating room for the first time on your rotations. Secondly, for a lot of specialties, there's a spectrum in terms of how much the emphasis of your work is focused on diagnosis versus treatment. For specialties like neurology, rheumatology, infectious disease, patients often come in with presentations that could have a myriad of different causes. And a lot of the exciting part of your work is using all the tools that you have to figure out exactly what's going on. On the other hand, for a lot of specialties, especially surgical subspecialties, the diagnosis is often a lot more straightforward and the exciting part of the work comes in mastering the skills and techniques to really be able to treat the underlying cause of what's going on. Now, very closely related to treatment is the amount of functional improvement that you can give to your patients as a result of the treatments that you offer. There are a lot of physicians and physician scientists that are doing really important work today, working with medical conditions that don't have a lot of treatments today. And for some, working within those fields can be really rewarding. But I realized through two of my rotations, both in ENT and in orthopedics, that I really enjoy seeing the functional improvement that patients can have as a result of the treatments that we're able to provide. In orthopedics, you break your leg and you can't walk. And you fix that in the operating room and you are able to give someone their quality of life back. Similar things can happen in ENT as well where patients come in with years of dizziness or hearing loss or inability to swallow, and you're able to provide them treatments that can give them certain aspects of their quality of life back. And finally, there's the anatomy, the physiology, and the pathology that you work with in a particular specialty. Now, as I was going throughout medical school, I didn't really find that I had a particular interest in any one type of physiology. You know, I found learning about all the different organ systems really, really cool. And that's part of the reason why I chose ENT. You know, ENT is one of the few specialties that are not defined by an organ system, but rather an anatomic region of the body. And so we work in a whole variety of different organ systems from vascular to endocrine to GI to bony structures within the body. Now, you may certainly find that there are certain things that are not very interesting to you. So for instance, in ENT, we have to deal a lot with snot and earwax and looking up people's noses and down people's throats. And you have to make sure that working day in and day out with those types of body fluids or secretions is not something that grosses you out. Next there is the nature of the patient relationships that you form. And this one was really important to me because this is where I personally find a lot of the meaning and fulfillment in the work that I do. Now for the longevity of a patient relationship, there's a spectrum from seeing a patient just once to following patients for years at a time. On the one end, you have emergency medicine where you will typically only see a patient if they happen to come in at the same time that you're working a shift. In many non-surgical specialties that are based in the hospital, you might take care of patients for days or weeks at a time for the duration of their stay in the hospital. And finally, for many specialties like primary care or even some surgical specialties, you might follow patients for a long period of time as you're seeing them through the care that they receive from you and watch them improve. ENT is one that is somewhere in the middle of the road where for some of our surgical patients, we might follow them 
for years at a time. The second aspect is the depth of the patient relationship. And what I mean by this is how well you get to know your patient and perhaps their families during the course of your interactions with them as their physician. Now, the one specialty that really stood out to me in terms of forming some of the deepest patient relationships was psychiatry. And watching some of my psychiatry mentors counsel patients and work with them both in an inpatient and outpatient setting really blew me away in terms of how much you're able to understand what someone is going through and really address some of the problems that are going on in their lives that are affecting their mental health. Now, a couple of other areas where you can really form this depth of relationship is if you see patients over long periods of time and continue to get to know them and build a relationship with them that's beyond the specific condition that you're treating in that moment. And of course, there is care that is provided in the ICU where a lot of the decisions that are being made are life or death decisions where you work very closely with the patient and their families to figure out what the best next step to do is. Now for quite some time, I was really torn between emergency medicine and ENT. One of the reasons that pushed me towards ENT was that I really craved having these long enduring patient relationships where I would be able to get to know my patients over months and years. And finally, there are certain specialties that treat unique patient populations. And these include specialties like pediatrics or ob which are centered around certain patient populations, or even oncology, which are centered around a specific disease type. One of the reasons that I really liked ENT was because I didn't feel a very strong affinity towards any one specific patient population. And otolaryngologists treat all different types of patients from children to adults to the elderly, from very sick patients with head and neck cancers, or patients who are pretty healthy at baseline that have a particular functional or aesthetic issue that they want your help in addressing. And finally, there is quality of life. And I break this out into quality of life that you have at work and the quality of life that you have outside of work. Now at work, your quality of life is influenced by your residency training and your life as an attending. Residency training is one of those things that every physician just has to go through if they want to practice medicine. It can range from three years for residency programs like internal medicine to up to seven years for things like neurosurgery. Now residency is going to be difficult no matter where you go, no matter what specialty you go into. But there is still a spectrum of difficulty just purely based on the number of hours that you spend in the hospital. Now, surgical specialties will tend to have more hours in the hospital where you can start your day around 4.30 or 5 in the morning and oftentimes won't go home until 7, 8 or 9 p.m. at night. On the other hand, there are some specialties that just spend less time in the hospital, like emergency medicine where residents might spend anywhere from 16 to 28 hour shifts in the hospital per month. Now, the second aspect beyond residency is the quality of life you have as an attending at your job. And a lot of this comes down to the way that your work is structured around administrative burden or around bureaucracy. And this is gonna be very different depending on where you work and what specialty that you're in. And something that I'm still very much learning about, there are certainly some specialties where physicians might feel less agency in making their own call and their own decision on what's right, and many of their operations are dictated by hospital policy or insurance policy. The third aspect is the amount of flexibility and control you have over your own schedule and time. And I think there are three things that influence this. Number one is whether or not you have a shift work schedule. Number two is the amount of call that you have to take. And number three is whether or not you can start your own practice. Now for specialties that are based on shift work like emergency medicine or trauma surgery, these are specialties where you have very predictable amounts of time off. And emergency medicine physicians typically work around 12 eight hour shifts a month. And you can even stack these shifts so that you can have weeks off without having to use any vacation. Now, the second aspect of call really depends on the acuity of care that is provided within your specialty. So specialties like neurosurgery or vascular surgery, where there can be a lot of emergencies that need to be treated right away, will typically have more intense call schedules than specialties like dermatology, for instance. And finally, this last aspect of starting your own practice is not specialty specific, but if you are in a specialty where you can start your own practice, that can give you a lot of autonomy, especially as you become your own boss. And finally, there is your compensation and earning potential. And I've included in the link below a list of the average salaries of all the different specialties so that you can go have a look. And I will note that there is a lot of variation within these salaries, depending on your years of experience and whether or not you have your own practice. Okay, everyone, so that covers the different factors that went into my specialty decision. So at the end of the day, I chose ENT because it matched my preferences where I had them. I knew I really wanted something surgical where I could master my craft. And ENT gave me a lot of variety to play with within that. Well, we performed these big complex reconstructions after head and neck cancer resections to working very 
very delicately with a lot of tactile finesse when drilling inside the inner ear or using a laser to blast a small nodule off of the vocal cords. In addition, this variety meant that we treat patients of all kinds, from children to the elderly, patients who are really sick to patients that are relatively healthy. And the quality of life aspect of ENT meant that we can work very functionally, helping patients regain their ability to swallow or their ability to hear. And also aesthetically, where we can help patients ensure that the confidence that they feel on the outside matches the confidence that they feel on the inside. And lastly, there's a lot of flexibility built within ENT to be able to scale up or down the amount of surgical practice that you do. So for someone like me who has a lot of interests in health policy and health business, being able to scale down my surgical practice and work purely in a clinical setting doing medical treatment means that I can free up time to pursue other things in my career. Now for all of you who are making this decision about what specialty you're going to go into, the best advice that I can give is to just really immerse yourselves into these environments on your rotations so that you can get a really good sense of what a particular path feels like for you and continue on this journey to find the shoe that fits you best. I will say this is a really exciting journey and if you have any questions or comments, please be sure to leave them in the comment section below or feel free to DM me on Instagram. I've had a number of conversations with a bunch of you over the last several weeks, so please feel free to reach out anytime. And as always, be sure to like and subscribe and I will see you next time.